Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Well, about a half an hour ago, I got a package and it is the Kobo Ellipsa pack. This is a test unit as the official sales start from uh, June 24th, I believe. So I really do want to extend my thanks to the Kobo team for actually sending me this Kobo Ellipsa pack review unit so that I can unbox it, check it out and bring the videos and how it is and the first impressions to you guys. So let's do the unboxing and the first impressions of the Kobo Ellipsa. So welcome to the Kobo Ellipsa unboxing and first impressions. So this is the Kobo Ellipsa pack, which contains the Kobo Ellipsa itself, the Kobo stylus and the Kobo sleep cover. Now, if you don't know why this device is important and why I'm very giddy and excited about it, is that this is the first time ever so far that Kobo has done two things. This is the first 10.3 inch device for Kobo. And more importantly, this is the first e-note or note taking capable um, uh, e-ink device from Kobo. That's why it's a really big deal. The box is really, really big. So um, obviously because it's a pack box and contains everything. On the back we have completely minimalistic design, completely white and just some of the specifications and the illustrations of the device, the sleep cover and the stylus itself. So it says 10.3 inch e-ink Carta 1200. Then we have comfort light, take notes with the stylus and compatible sleep cover included in Wi-Fi. All right, so let's open up and see what we get inside. Haha! <laughs> so we have some more boxes. Because this is a package, I guess we get three other boxes. So the first one is going to be the Kobo Ellipsa itself. Then we get the Kobo stylus. And underneath here, is the Kobo Ellipsa sleep cover. I assume that it's going to be possible maybe at some point in time to separately buy these items and that's why each one has a packaging of their own. But for now this is the uh, Kobo Ellipsa pack and this is what we actually get inside. So let's focus on, yeah of course the pen first, right? No, let's do the device. All right, so let's check out the packaging for the Kobo Ellipsa. So this is the indication of the device. I think that it looks very, very pretty. And again, the same type of rules are here as well. So we have the contents of the box, device, paper, USB-C cable. Let's open it up. There we go. So this is kind of sexy. Here is the device. This, this feels a lot lighter than it looks. Oh, and pretty color. Let me try and capture this really, really pretty color. So we got the device, quick start guide and some warranty papers and a USB-C cable. All right, and here is the device. And the first thing I'm going to do is going to take off this protective cover. So far, I am really, really giddy because design wise, this is looking fabulous. And I told you, I was a big fan of the design and of the functionality of the Kobo Libra H2O. And this so far is looking really, really cool. On the front, we have a completely flush screen and uh, already built in. I don't think this is applied. This is basically like a built in paper like surface, very, very matte type of a surface that really dulls down the reflections quite a bit. These are very harsh and lit conditions and that we have a black surface. So once we actually turn it on, you will probably see it you go even more matte. On the side we have a Kobo. So far he's saying powered off and that's it. No buttons, no nothing on the front. On the back, we have a completely clean surface here. No indications of any kind, which I really love. Just the logo here and two anti-slip feet, which is really, really sweet to see. The profile of the Ellipsa is also very, very interesting because as you can see, it goes from a thicker side on the side where you actually hold it and then it gradually kind of 
tapers off to the side here, giving you an impression that it's a much thinner device than it actually is. And I think that they're doing a good and a smart weight distribution here because it is really easy to handle with one hand. So yeah, this is definitely a weight distribution kind of thing. So somebody knows what they are doing. And additionally, because of this bend, this other hand really feels comfortable to just simply lay here in the hand and kind of hold it as a comfortable reader. And while the thickness here is definitely on the thicker side of things than the other devices, because of this taper and it tapers off to be really, really thin on the side, you do not get an impression that this is a massive device. On the contrary, you get something that's comfortable and very pleasant to hold in your hand. So far, very, very nice. There's nothing on the top, nothing on the thin right side, nothing on the bottom and everything else on the left hand side or the thicker side, which is the USB-C and the power button. And I really love the fact that they've put all the legal mambo jumbo here so that they can keep this surface clean. This is pretty much the first time that I've actually seen this and I love that they've done that. This is very, very cool. Overall, the design is really, really good and the weight distribution, the size, the proportions, you know that I am a fan of the Note Air and uh, uh, Remarkable design with this one side wider and basically a more square overall frame. I think that for reader and for note taking, it's a really, really cool thing thing to kind of have. The build quality seems to be really good, but everything is plastic. So you have plastic all around edges here and the plastic back here and the top. Well, I don't know if it's glass underneath or not simply because we have this screen protective surface on top. I'm going to be asking those questions and I'm going to be clarifying that in the in-depth review. For now, these are just my first impressions. And the first impressions about the uh, how it looks and the ergonomics and the uh, quality of it is very, very good. I expected a lot and it definitely delivered. All right, let's focus on the Kobo stylus now and unbox that guy. We slide the box out, box within a box within a box. Here's the pen. Well, this is really well built, much better than I thought. So this is all metal build looks like maybe just the front. No, this looks like all metal build because it's cold and it definitely feels metal. The buttons, we have two buttons here. Um, this is an active stylus, so you should be able to unscrew it. The battery is already in there, so it's a quadruple A battery that goes in there and screws back down here. I'm not a fan of having majority of the weight so far up because that just kind of tilts the balance a little bit off and when it's top heavy and you're writing and you're holding your pen like this all the way down then it's not something that's too comfortable. However, if you do slide it, uh, if your style of writing is like this where your uh, index finger is actually resting on where the buttons are and you're just writing like this, then that weight actually makes sense because it's centered right around here which actually just provides good support on your hand and, and, and then it just works. So if your writing style is something like this, that your index finger is where the button is and your thumb is here, then you're good to go and I think you're gonna like it. If you are used to holding your pen all the way down here, as I sometimes do, then it won't be that good because you will have a lot of weight flapping around in the air here. But overall, this is a much better balanced pen than the one on the Lightbook P10. And again, this talks about the design because we have this much uh, that is actually weighing on the opposite side. And then the battery comes almost in the middle. It's so not quite in the middle, but close. While in the Lightbook P10, that battery is all the way in the back and that just makes it way more uncomfortable. So for an active stylus with a battery that's replaceable, uh, taking all of these things into consideration, I think that the pen 
has good ergonomics and it fits uh, nicely in the hand, especially if you're writing gesture or holding the pen is so that your index finger is on one of the buttons here. The design is very minimalistic and uh, clean. You have the Kobo logo, you have the two buttons and we have exchangeable nibs on the top. Underneath this packaging here, when you pull it up like this, you have your extra stuff. This is where the battery goes. And underneath here, you have the tool for taking out the nib and one extra nib. And you get some documentation and a quick start guide in a nice little paper pouch. All right, and now let's unpack the sleep cover. This is massive. What the? Okay, well, this is really huge. I did not expect this to be that, that big. Okay, so we have a magnetic cover here with a lot of stuff. So we have instructions here, I guess. Oh, magnetic stuff. Okay, not magnetic stuff. Yes, magnetic stuff. Okay, so this is an interesting cover, but really, really massive. So this is a big, big bucket here that's definitely going to protect your device, but uh, it definitely adds to the weight and to the size of the overall package, especially when you consider how nice and small this is, then this is just like, I'm going to eat you. But that being said, this thing is going to protect your device really, really well. Plus, it has lots of different magnets and bending options. The first thing that you can do is you have your pen holder here. It just fits like this. So yeah, maybe even if it does have any magnets, it's uh, probably not that important. It's easy to get out, so that's okay. Not a very high-tech solution, it's nothing fancy, but it's rather on a practical side of things. The cover itself is magnetic and also detachable, so this front whole jiggly thing is definitely a detachable thing, and then you can just have a bucket in here if you want to protect your device from the back. The bucket itself has an opening for the USB-C port so that you can charge it, and this this part here is bendy so that you can power off or on your device via through the cover itself. The color is... I'm not so sure about the color. I mean, it's uh, it would have been much nicer if it was a nice gray or something a little bit muted because this kind of blue doesn't really float my boat. Um, I don't like it. I don't like this color, but I think that uh, by the time June 24th comes out, hopefully we will have some other color choices as well. Um, the material is probably uh, faux leather. Yeah, this looks like faux leather and nice and plush from the inside here to protect your device. The cool thing is that you can also have left or right-handed orientation. It doesn't matter because you can put this cover on this side or on this side depending on what your preferences are. So somebody was thinking, very, very cool. The way that you can actually fit it to uh, be kind of elevated at an angle for reading is this section here is magnetic, it snaps, then you bend this a little bit, and then this other one also snaps into place. So when you put it like this, then you have it at an angle for reading or for writing, especially for reflections as well. So we'll test that out when I put actually the device in and then see how it all looks. So the Kobo Ellipsa pack contains everything that you may need, the device itself, the stylus and the protective sleep cover, multifunction thingies and the USB-C cable. So complete package, nothing super fancy extra in there, but everything that you will need. Now let's power on the device and see what's what. So we're just going to press and hold the power button here and see if it has a charge. It's blinking. It's powering up. Whether you are, you prefer this side to the holding side to be on your left hand or on the right hand, the device immediately adapts to your own 
uh, preference. And by the time you're actually done with flipping around, it's also done doing it. So here is Kobo Ellipsa. Keep in mind that this is first impressions. So I'm not going to do a full review now or anything like that. I'm just unboxing it so I can show you guys that and then to test it over the weekend and coming week so that I can prepare the in-depth review. So the touch seems to be good. The responsiveness is okay, what I would expect from a device like this. Actually, it's more snappy than what I'm used to. Let's just check out a couple of basic things. So this is without the front light at all and really crisp image as what I'm used to from Kobo devices. Lovely, lovely image quality front light. Let's turn it on and then just go a little bit all the way up and you can see that the uniformity is excellent. So that's the comfort light that they're talking about and they were definitely able to transfer that onto the larger 10.3 uh, inch format. Again in the in-depth review I'm going to shoot this and show you in low light conditions so that you can see the uniformity but I can see from here that this is really really good front light. Now it doesn't seem to have warmth so that's something that's going to be I really hope that it does have it and that there's like some settings that you can do additionally to actually adjust that. We all know that Kobo is a really good book reader. Where it did lack before was how it handled documents and it never before had notebooks. Now I don't have any documents loaded here so I can't test that but I can certainly test and that's definitely what I want is this part here, my notebooks. Let's press it they introduce something new, which is, and we should be able to see it now. When I press to create a new notebook, yes, we have an option of, of course, naming our notebook, but we have an option to choose between basic notebooks and advanced notebooks. Now, basic notebooks is basically just a notebook that allows you to write anywhere you want, any orientation or anything like that, with a big caveat it doesn't have OCR, so it cannot convert handwriting into text. So basic notebooks is just a basic notebook like replacement for a paper notebook. Now advanced notebook is a little bit different. An advanced notebook converts handwriting into type or text and supports adding free form sections, diagrams, equations, and also gestures that you can actually connect the word, separate it and all that kind of stuff. But here's the but for the advanced notebook, you are supposed to just have lines and when you write in those lines, then the uh, conversion actually happens. So for the purpose of this first impressions, I'm going to test both of them. I'm just going to check out the writing performance and the feel in the basic notebook and some basic tests in the advanced notebook and then we're going to wrap it up. So let's start with the basic notebook. My basic notebook. Book. Are you able to do it? Yep. Not a single letter hitched. So very, very cool to see that. I like to see a uh, responsive keyboard. And I'm really, really impressed with the image quality. This, this looks very, very crisp and cool. All right. So we have swipe to turn pages, highlight and erase. Highlighter is the bottom button, the top button is the eraser. And we also have the option to adjust thickness and shading and try different pen styles from ballpoint to calligraphy. Hmm. Um, switch between object eraser or erasing strokes or a brush eraser, undo redo actions, change the page background, export notebook and more and hide menu. Perfect introduction so let's now try and do that. So this is where my menu is very easy and immediately I have uh, navigation of my notebook. This is really really cool, simple but very very sweet because you don't have to go into a sub menu or anything like that. Nope, it's right there. You just expose it and you navigate and you're done. Cool. Now uh, we have our name that I can select and choose. Yep, we go back and then I can go back into my notebook. Very responsive actually. So if I go back and back into the notebook, very responsive. I like that. And then in the options, we have change page background, which would be a template, clear page, delete page, refresh page, export. Now for now, I just want a lined backdrop. For now, we have only a couple of 
uh, templates here. So we have grid lines and dots and clear. So only four templates so far. And I don't see an option for a custom templates. I really, really hope that that's something that they will change for the launch date or soon after launch date if they don't manage. Now, another thing that I'm not so sure is that the refresh page for refreshing, this is definitely something that you want to have handy, either as a gesture or as an ability to actually put it as a button here. So we'll see if that's actually a possibility or not. At the moment, yeah, user interface, that would be, um, it's unnecessary to go uh, to refresh a page to actually open the menu here and then refresh a page. It would be at least better to just open menu and refresh. So that's okay. And then we have ballpoint pen, fountain pen, calligraphy pen, brush, highlighter, preset five sizes of the brush, so not flexible, and pen shade, grayscale from black and four shades of gray. The eraser, object eraser or brush eraser. I prefer object eraser, so that's that. So now we have this set up. Let's see, does the pen work? Yeah, it does, okay, very responsive. And I'm gonna try every pen here so that we can see what results we get. So let's get going. All right, and now let's test the pressure sensitivity. Not, well, it's okay, but definitely not that sensitive. So the pressure sensitivity is there and maybe, you know, probably yeah, the pen does have 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity, but as Moby Scribe uh, uh, Origin tablet showed, it's how you implement that pressure sensitivity. And currently this is not that sensitive. So yes, this is uh, it's possible to go from thin to thick, but for example, this is the thinnest that I can actually have. And when I'm just barely touching it, there's some, yeah, the explotches here that are happening again, very, very early uh, kind of a, a version of software. So some bugs are going to be there, but yeah, definitely uh, a lot leaves quite a bit to be desired as far as the pressure sensitivity goes. So how is the writing experience uh, or what are the first impressions of the writing experience on the um, Ellipse from Kobo? Well, since it is an active stylus here, that means that we don't have a Wacom layer on top and we don't have a Wacom uh, 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 pen um, input, which is always going to be or most always going to be superior, far superior to any type of active styluses. And that is certainly the true in this case as well. It is promising. So the writing so far, the feel is great. 
the the scratchiness of the surface is really good the pen feels very very nice and it sounds also very very good it's nice and paper like and i think that the combination of a harder nib here and this surface is really well balanced uh, however there's of course going to be a couple of things that are missing so currently i i haven't calibrated the pen so i would need to calibrate the pen first to actually see how much improvement there will be from um, that one as far as that goes because currently there's a little bit of a disconnect nothing drastic but just a little bit of a disconnect from the uh, uh, where I'm writing and where the nib actually is but to put Kobo Ellipsa writing experience in the perspective from the first impressions only I'm gonna compare it to the Lightbook P10 which is also an active stylus no vacuum layer and quirk logic paper which is basically a Sony uh, DPT device but that one is also an active stylus Kobo Ellipsa even as it is now, is really, really a lot ahead of the Lightbook P10. The writing experience on the Lightbook P10, even after the latest update, which is something that I will uh, cover at some point, is while it was improved, it's still not there, and Kobo Ellipsa is definitely quite a bit better than the Lightbook P10 is as far as writing goes. However, when you compare it to the uh, Quirk Logic paper, it's not as good. And the writing experience is definitely not as good as on the Wacom enabled devices such as Books Note Air, for example, or the Remarkable. I would just like to remind you that this is a very early version, right? So there's a lot of improvement still a available for the platform and as a very early version this is really really good and this is a really good good starting point it remains to be seen how far are they able to push it and how far they are able to improve it of course that's gonna be seen over time but even as it is i think that the writing experience is definitely okay and better than what i expected from an active stylus because that was one of my worries when i actually read and the specifications came out it's an active stylus it was like oh no this is not a Wacom enabled device so it can be anything so we'll see uh, in the in-depth review of course I'm gonna be testing out the, the brushes and everything in far more detail I'm gonna be testing out the latency distance from the tip of the screen and everything like that so we'll have much more in-depth information but for now I am positively surprised by the writing experience and the writing feel with the Kobo Ellipsa, given the fact that it, it, it is using an active stylus, which inherently is, as far as I'm concerned at least, slightly worse experience than the devices that are Wacom enabled. The overall performance of the notebook is something that I actually quite like and it has like a auto refresh that it's somewhat smart so I can't wait to actually start using this uh, more actively. One thing that I do miss is the ability to you know just put the pen somewhere yeah of course i can put it in the cover but that cav cover is so massive and heavy that it would have been nice to actually have like uh yeah just <laughs> slot it in like nobody does that i don't know why why don't you just have like a option to whoop, slot it in it doesn't have to be a magnet just a hole in here and then just zoot, and then it's there but okay wishful thinking design wise that's something that um i again don't like but then again and almost all of the devices have that issue except for the ones that are magnetically enabled. One other thing that I also wanted to cover is that the writing quality is very nice and it does have post-processing after a stroke has been done. The strokes are nicely kind of smoothed out and then they are beautiful as far as they look. Of course we're gonna export and test all of that stuff in the in-depth review for now. This is a basic first test. All right, now let's check out and just a very, very quick look at the, um, yeah, let's do the advanced uh, notebook. The notebook, I know I typed that. The notebook, there we go, so. And let's see, so you can convert your handwriting to text 
in advanced notebooks. That's its primary purpose. And it recognizes the handwriting and turn it into type text with a double tap. You can scribble to delete words, words or characters. You can swipe down to create a space between the characters. You can swipe up to join the characters. You can underline to create a heading style. Now that's sweet. And you can double tap to convert or toggle the text size for easier editing. Add diagrams and equations. We're going to be testing out in the in-depth review and add move or resize content as needed. Even your handwriting notes reflow automatically. So this really looks uh, as something that's going to be interesting to do. So for now, I'm just going to do a basic writing test and see how the OCR or how the handwriting recognition works. So let's try that. All right, so double tap. It converted it into a K. This is a subheading. These are block letters. Oh, this is really fast and really good. It only got handwriter, but I wrote terribly. So this is really cool. Let's see numbers. K, it can't do the square root as far as the symbols go, but maybe there's something else. So the first impression is really, really interesting. So let's try just a couple of gestures. This and now I believe like this is to merge. How to connect it. And then if I want to split them up. How to connect it and then it auto reorients. All right. So there's definitely a learning curve that I would need to uh, invest in so that I know how this actually works. But one thing that I've already seen here is you have auto rotate. So that means, oh, cool. So you can definitely, uh, and you can scroll here. And does it actually add more content? Well, it looks like this is going to be one continuous page as you're starting to actually write in a smart notebook or the advanced notebook as it's called. So this is definitely a new approach, something that uh, we had elements of these on some of the other platforms, but never everything put together into such a um, seemingly comprehensive package. So I'm very, very interested to see what can we do. There we go. Insert math equation, insert diagram, insert drawing. This is going to be very interesting to test out and to uh, check out for the in-depth review. All right, and for completeness sake, let's just check out a little bit of the reader side of things so that we can see the image quality and what we have. So we have the standard kind of guidelines so we can mark up our PDFs and I believe we will be able to mark up eBooks as well. So that's a good thing. And of course, the same highlight and eraser functions as when writing. You can press and hold the word to see the definition and read at night by adjusting the swiping here auto syncing and of course other menus as well. Now, while the um, lack of, of Wacom layer is slightly detrimental to the uh, writing experience side of things, it is actually very, very beneficial to the reader side of things because you don't have another layer on top of the devices, which means that the brightness is very, very nice and the crispness of the images um, that are displayed is actually very noticeably superior to the other devices out there. And I believe that you can clearly see that the crispness of the images here is absolutely phenomenal. So this is really, really gorgeous to actually look at and a very, very nice difference to see. Let's now check out the performance. Let's see, hyperlinks are working. All right, so let's check out what can we have here. Let's do the formatting around there. So let's see, much smaller margin so that we have it there and smaller font size. Okay, not that small. And the speed of the device is very good. So you are able to quickly change the formatting of a book, which is something that I like. And the line spacing a little bit less. I like things to be a little bit more dense. 
yeah, this is how I like it. Yeah, let's have it justification like this. And let's double check here. Yeah, of course, you have the option of having it as a portrait or a landscape. And the orientation should work. So I could be able to, yep, I auto orient and it flips around immediately. And again, the performance is the same. By the time I'm done orienting my device, it's really, really fast and it just kind of flips around. So let's go back to uh, portrait mode like this. And I should be also able to have auto rotate. So this should work. Yeah, landscape, portrait, landscape, portrait. So definitely works really, really well. And let's zoom in so that you can see the image uh, quality of the characters. We are now at maximum volume, <laughs> as JB would say. Um, so we are now at maximum zoom level. And for comparison's sake, this is the nib itself. So this is very, very small. And you can see that the crispness is really, really good. But more importantly, the contrast is very, very vivid. So it's super easy on the eyes and very, very readable. I really am impressed by the image quality. This is something that, uh, no pun intended, but it pops out definitely pops out as a, a big benefit of this device. And here's another maximum zoom level on the image quality. Just look at how crisp and sharp and well defined this is. I mean, look at these details here, the shading and everything. It's just displaying the shades so, so well. And the crispness of the details, you can actually clearly see it here in the foliage. So if it's able to handle some small details like these, and especially as you can see all of there here, then handling the text is definitely not a problem at all. So very, very impressive uh, image quality here. This is something that I did not expect. So this is the primary impression for me so far. I mean, the way this thing handles the shading and the crispness of the details is really spectacular. So I'm very, very impressed with the image quality of the Kobo Ellipsa. All right, now to wrap it up, let's put Kobo to sleep. There we go. So now it's sleeping and it's telling you where you were. And now let's put it into this sleep cover because it's sleeping. And um, yeah, then see how the whole package is once we do that. So we slide one portion into here and then we should be able to snap the covers. Yep, it snaps super easy. And yeah, of course, adds to the weight and it's more massive, but at least it protects your device. And here's the thing that I really like. And again, you can see the examples of really good design. The device itself, the, f the surface of the device is inside of the cover. So even if it falls on top, it will first hit the edges of the protective cover. Uh, yeah, first and not the screen itself. Again, really, really smart design. And these areas here are reinforced and nice and thick. So this is a type of a cover while massive and definitely adds to the weight and dimension and all of these things. But it does make me feel very, very safe when handling the device. So it does make sense as far as that goes. Oh, it does it automatic. Let's do this. Dun 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 and then we pop the pen inside here. This is the entire package and then you just put it to sleep and there you go. All together, very massive and quite a lot heavier. This is not something that I can comfortably uh, or would want to handle comfortably with one hand. The button works really good. However, I think it's not meant for that. This is why it has this little cover here so that you can actually put it like this and then deal with the document on while on the table. And as such, it actually makes quite a lot of sense. Now, if it's very easy to get a device out of this, then I'm going to be a happy puppy. So let's try and see how easy is it to get the device out. It's okay. 
So on a scale of 9 to 10, I guess getting the device out of it is handy and it's around a 7, 7.5. So it's definitely okay and on the better side of things. And then you can actually just put this in. So this whole cover can actually be like your stand for the Kobo Ellipsa that's on your work desk or anything like that. And when you're there, you just, uh, yeah, go back to it. You work on it. And yeah, when you want to go to sleep and you want to read, you pop it out. So this is where it gets a seven because it's not super easy. Maybe it gets easier. Maybe it gets easier over time or maybe I will find a better way. But for now, it's definitely a little bit cumbersome. But yeah, you get it out and then you go to sleep and you have a beautiful, super flexible, thin and light reader for your device. So for me, this whole setup, the, the sleep cover actually makes more sense to think of in, as in terms of a docking station, so to speak, because it can actually have a cable here to charge it and everything else. And if I look at it like that, then it makes perfect sense. So, and I'm going to look at it like that because that's how I would use it. Because, yeah, the, the, the whole thing of just using it like this is a portable thing that, that just is way too huge and way too massive. And honestly, I really don't think that it's been designed for that. And like this, it actually makes perfect sense and it's very easy to read and to kind of use. Anything further would be me uh, starting the review process itself and I am not going to do that because this is unboxing and first impressions. Well, there you go. So this is the Kobo Ellipsa first impressions and unboxing. The first 10.3 inch e-ink device from Kobo and the first note taking capable E ink device from Kobo as well. The first impressions, as far as I'm concerned, are very, very good. And it's pretty much what I expected given the fact that it is using that active stylus and that it doesn't have a Wacom layer on top. So it's not a Wacom uh, enabled device. I love the design. I really love how it feels. I love the responsiveness of it. And um, the writing is okay. As I said, it's perfectly fine. It's not as good as Quirk logic papier but it's definitely not as bad as the lightbook p10 was i think that it's already now in a very very good state and the writing experience is perfectly okay now active styluses are almost never going to be as good uh, or as responsive or as comfortable as a vacuum device will be so that has to be taken into consideration but herein lies the biggest surprise and the biggest impression that I got from the Kobo Ellipsa and that is the image quality and the image clarity. It really is spectacular, especially how the shading is being handled. The contrast and everything, as I've shown you with the, with the close-ups and everything, it's really, really impressive. So it's something that stands out and it pops out and it just is a very, very pleasant uh, thing to see. Now, for the in-depth review, I'm going to be testing out whether it has an amber light or not. Does it have all of these kinds of things? And um, yeah, so there's going to be definitely in-depth uh, 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 checking stuff out of the Kobo Ellipsa. That's something that's going to come maybe in about a week or so, um, depending on how much time it takes to actually test it thoroughly. But for now, I just wanted to bring you the first impressions and just like a general overview. And for me, it makes sense that this is primarily a reader with note taking capabilities. And as such, I think that it works really, really good. What also remains to be seen is testing of the uh, advanced notebook and how does the OCR actually work and how does it perform and all that kind of stuff. So all of that and more is to come in the in-depth review of the Kobo Ellipsa. So be sure to subscribe and ding the notification bell to get notified when that more certainly multi-part video comes out. Again, I want to thank Kobo for being really cool to actually send me this package so ahead of time. I want to thank you guys for watching and I want to thank you for the support. If you like the video, please like and subscribe and remember to check out the uh, My Daily Organizer. It's a yearly organizer, a quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily with a daily diary and all sorts of things. Um, you can check out the video description down below. It's uh, 
interactive PDF document that I made that's designed specifically for e-ink devices such as Remarkable, Books and Supernote. But it's going to be definitely interesting to see how it performs and does it perform and how it actually works on the Kobo Ellipsa as well. Because who knows, maybe it works on it too, which would definitely be cool. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.